Around 1996, Gary Kasparov played Deep Blue. And Deep Blue, at the time, was one of the 300 uh, most powerful supercomputers that existed in the world. And Gary Kasparov lost a game to this supercomputer. Uh, and this is actually a pretty remarkable thing. This is the first time ever a sitting world champion had lost a game to a computer. And I think that's actually a pretty remarkable feat, for one. I think also it's pretty remarkable that I think Many of the people in this room uh, may have not been born then, and also uh, may think that's actually not very re remarkable, because they know computers are so powerful and so fast, you know, of course a computer is faster. And in fact, your intuition is absolutely right. The, the mobile phone that you have in your pocket, assuming you've bought one in the last couple years, um, is actually far, far more powerful than the, than the deep blue supercomputer. In fact, running the right software, your cell phone could beat, uh, with very high probability, many of the best uh, chess players in the world today. It's pretty amazing. It's also pretty remarkable that 20 years before this happened, a leading expert in the world, someone who deeply understood chess and actually has written books on both chess and computers, said that the idea of an electronic world champion belongs only in the pages of a science fiction book. This is pretty amazing. These are actually all three pretty remarkable chain of events that's happened over the last 40 years. We went from something which was strictly in the realm of science fiction to something which is at the limit of what we could do with, if we marshaled all of the resources that we had at our disposal and put them into you know, a single task to the mundane, you know, things that we just take for granted in our day-to-day -day life. And this is actually a pretty remarkable transformation that's happened over the past 40 years. And I think sometimes something that we often lose sight of, we think about, we just assume the next amazing thing is happening, and we very quickly pull it into what, you know, what we consider normal. But I, you know, I think there's so many p young people here today who are just beginning on their career. You know, I ask you to think, where are you going to be in your career 20 years from now? Where are you going to be in your career 40 years from now? Uh, probably still very active in your field. And you know, the things that are science fiction now may become mundane by the time you're finished. So you're preparing now for a, to embark on a career of a significant transformation. Uh -huh.